Hello. So th this evening I finished, um, I, I read uh, Flaubert in Egypt. It's a collection of letters and travel notes uh, from the time that Flaubert visited the Orient. Um, and it's, it's uh, simultaneously fascinating beautiful and then also this brutal monstrous imagery um, and what makes it so multifaceted is the the way of Flaubert's personality um, changes depending on the, the person that he's writing to. Um, so there's a handful of people that he writes to in, in this little little volume. Um, he writes to his mother and then some friends friends of his and then also it has um, his travel notes which um, have no audience, they're written just for him. And then also Max DeCamp who was his uh, friend that went on the trip with him. It also has passages um, that he wrote. So you get, um, with all of those things, you get a, a, a great, like a panoramic view of Cairo and the Nile, while also, while also getting a, um, a much better look at Flaubert as a person. Um, to his mother, he waxes lyrical and he writes beautiful, effusive letters to her. And um, he's very p polite and a good son. And he he writes to her and says, uh, "I want you to write back in volumes, and I miss you and I love you." And I, I don't think he's being disingenuous at all. Um, and he'll, he'll tell her about uh, the the arts and the culture and customs and architecture and the fashion of the Orient and it's very I, I, idealized and romantic. And then he'll write to his friends and their filth and he, he tells his friends about all of the prostitutes that he's been with and all sorts of sexual transgressions. Um, acts of bestiality that he witnessed um, and he, he can go into detail with uh, some kind of gr grotesque imagery that have that trademark um, cold ob objective tone that Flaubert can have. Uh, I, one, of, one of the things that I like about Flaubert is that he can be objective and misanthropic at the same time. Uh, at the beginning of the book, he um, talks about other passengers that are beginning the trip, and he says, uh, <clears throat> he says, an English family, hideous. Another point, he, he just describes a child, and he goes, a little boy with the face of an idiot. Uh, and it go, goes on and he, he can just pass these really harsh judgments and move on and they're written in such a way that it's still interesting um, but you catch his cynicism um, later on um, there, one of the most interesting passages is um, him responding to his mother who in a previous letter asked uh, that Flaubert gets a get a job after the, the trip so when he gets back to France that he finds a job and he responds to her and basically says that he, he, he's above working that he, he needs to spend his time on his art and what makes it interesting in retrospect is at this point 
he hasn't published anything. He hadn't written Madame Bovary or Sentimental Education, at, at least in full. He, he, he wasn't the, the brilliant um, Flaubert that, um, he, that, I guess even the people during his time will find out and discover that he was. He was a 28-year-old loafer, brilliant, but he liked to, to sit in comfy armchairs and I, idle all day long and do nothing. And he's presenting an argument to his mother that his time is better spent doing nothing than working. And he convinces her through his words, which also says a lot about him. Um, some of the more horrendous, horrendous, monstrous portions of the book, I'll mention maybe two. Um, uh, Flaubert and his friend Maxim de Camp shoot dogs for fun um, at one point. Uh, at another point, Flaubert talks about buying a, a, buying woman's, uh, buying a woman's hair and describes her crying as the woman's husband shore in her head. Um, with not much judgment passed by Flaubert. He, he's just uh, a traveler enjoying the sights and um, it doesn't cause him any bother, which is tr troubling. So the book has highs and lows, fascinating uh, glimpses into um, a totally different culture for me and for him, while also exploring uh, the depths of um, humanity on um, his part and the, the land in which he was touring. Uh, I'll end by saying that um, as a reader, I, I like that last week I could spend time with Mark Twain going down the Mississippi and then today spend time with Flaubert going down the Nile. Uh, it's the, the magic of reading. Um, anyway, it's Flaubert in Egypt. Uh, leave a comment if you would like, and thank you for watching.